Last time on Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Inner Theater. Zhuang convinced her allies to leave Westport and seek out her brother and nephew on East Linya under the guise of completing a military mission. But as they were passing through the forest near Lantra du Renard, they encountered several humans fleeing ablaze. Oh my god! No. In the direction of Lantra du Renard is a large forest fire. They suppressed the flames, captured two culprits, questioned and killed them, and then headed into Arabane after burying Juan's sister. Once in Arabane, they headed to the city center and pretended to be tourists seeking a dragon hunting adventure excursion. And now, Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dim Theater continues. So, they've noticed that every day an iron bar goes missing from your cage, and the head guard is asking them to do something about it, find some other way to jail you. So they've started trying to devise another way to jail you. But since all the jails were empty, uh, an execution day came up really quick. And so they decided to try and hang you before they could devise a new way to jail you. The problem is, when they tried to hang you, you were a little too heavy for the rope, and the rope didn't strangle you because your neck is made of rock. So you just swung there. And kinda, and they, yeah, you kind of made fools of them. And they tried to hang you, it didn't work, and the people were all really angry that you didn't die. And then they yelled at the, the head of the town guard, Timmy Finnegan, and now he's in charge of trying to find a way to, to execute you that'll actually work. So for the time being, you're still alone in the cell until they can devise a new way to hold you, but they've been moving you to a new cell every day and counting the bars. And there's still four guards downstairs with you. Alright. Where I'm still on good rapport with these guards, right? Yeah, they they seem to like you like you're not you're not human, so they don't want to treat you too kindly. But they definitely probably treat you better than they have any of the Kitsune prisoners they've had, for sure. Most definitely. Well, I wanna I wanna start I wanna get another conversation going, maybe tell some old stories about, you know, trapping in the woods. And, yeah, share uh, some like hunting stories, get some common ground going with them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man, we love to hunt, man. Oh, yeah, that's great. You know, back when I was human, like, uh, uh, Kitsune actually turned me into this monster I am now. Um, but the only thing that made me look like a human was my, uh, my, um, cloak. But you guys took that away from me. It was the one thing I had. They said, for real, you mean you're really a human, but they made you look like a rotten man? Yeah, yeah. That's some crazy stuff, man. I said, well, I'll tell you what, man, maybe I'll, I'll go talk to my boss. Maybe you've been wrong, man. Maybe it's why we couldn't hang you. Yeah. Maybe that's our God's way, God Dragon's way of saying that, man, you're supposed to live and tell your tale. That you was cursed by the Kitsune. Would you be willing to speak in front of my group? Hell yeah. I mean, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He says, well, I'm, I'm going to go talk with the captain and see if we can get you out for tonight's meeting. Cool. All right. All right, so they go get your cloak, and, and you indeed do look like a human, and they're astonished. They're like, he really is just a really big old human, and maybe he was telling the truth. And They ask you a few more questions. You pretend to be racist, I assume, when they ask oh, you yeah. questions. Roll me a bluff check while you're pretending to be racist. <laughs> we'll just roll just a standard bluff check for all the pretend, all the pretend racist stuff you would have to say. Probably be like a couple of human powers in there, stuff like that. Nine? Nine? All right, so yeah, they could kind of tell you're new to it. They're like, hey, so you must be new to these parts. They said, you ain't, you ain't never uh, hated kitsunes before, have you, huh? Teach me your ways. So, well, we'll yeah. teach you. So you learn. After they, they done to put a curse on you, it'll be easy for you to learn how to hate them. We'll teach you all the proper slurs. You give it time. <laughs> all right, so they, they break you out. Um, they still have you in cuffs uh, because you're still accused of a crime. But they do take you out in cuffs to a HHK meeting. Humans hating kitsunes. Uh, so yeah, uh, you are there at the rally. Uh, you hear a couple other speakers speak. You know, human power and all that jazz, and how the kitsune are uh, ruining their education system, and uh, you know, living off living off the others and stealing and stuff like that. Um, and then they say we got a very special guest. He says, uh, you know, you may have seen him the other day at execution. He says, live through the execution. Cursed by Kitsune to not die. And uh, still a prisoner here in town, but 
the kitsune have wronged him and he wanted to share his story. So they bring you up to the podium and you're up to share your story with this crowd of what looks like 50 or 60 uh, guys in, in masks. Uh, yeah. A bunch of racist dudes. And they're like, yeah, shoot the kitsune, shoot the kitsune, and they cheer for that. Like, I was like, not only was he a kitsune, but he's a witch. Oh, kitsunes are witches, kitsunes are witches, boo, we hate kitsune witches, they agree with you. All kitsunes are witches. Yep, but if I can just get my monkey back, I'll be on the way. We don't know anything about your monkey. They don't seem to know anything about your monkey. They act, they're confused by that comment. That didn't seem racist at all. You guys know what he's talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't think that they would call themselves racist, Brian. No, I know. I'm just, you know. know. This is me just being funny. All right. Well, let's go all get some vegetable soup. Tell some stories. Definitely drink. Everyone all right, yeah. Else? They drink, and uh, they all come up to meet you, pat you on the back. After a while, the, the guard kind of loosens your cuffs. He says, you're all right, man. You feel free to have a good time. And if you know, if you don't go, you don't end up back in your cell tonight, it's not, not a big deal. No skin off my back. You know what I'm saying? Racial slur high five. All right. Racial, <laughs> all right. Racial slur high five. Got it. All right. So uh, you're at this human power meeting, drinking the Kool-Aid, hanging out with these dudes. Uh, you're at the, the, the meet and greet part of the evening, so. Meet and greet with the guest speaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they can see your face, but you can't see theirs. But everyone's asking you questions about, you know, wh- how you got cursed and stuff like that. I'm sure you're making up stuff. We'll assume that you're still not great at bluffing, but no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're definitely getting a lot of weird looks, but you know, you do look human at this point in your in your robe of human guys. So they're not hating on you. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You start drinking. That's good. They got plenty to drink there. Yeah. Uh, pretty strong drink. I'm going to drink. I mean, I would get two drinks. One for me, and I always get one. I set it across the table for me. Oh, my God. I like that. We'll say by the end of the night, that one's mysteriously gone, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mysteriously oh, also no. been drunken. Oh, I'm Yeah. Um... Uh, I'm going to, just, I'm just going to, I'm going to do a perception check to see what, uh, what, how people are doing, if everyone's really hammered right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of, roll it for me. See, see what, the, what, what the guard situation is like, if I can just kind of mosey off. I got a mask of one. Yeah, you can't tell because everyone here is a mask and you don't know, like the guys that brought you in brought you in in their HHK, co- like get up. So you don't know which guys are guards, which guys aren't. Um, the exits aren't really clearly marked. This is someone's house. Yeah. And so oh. you're, when you open a door, you wouldn't be sure if you're opening a closet or a restroom or an exit or anything like that. Uh, Walking on a big race orgy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. It could be one of those, uh, what's that name of that movie? Uh, uh, Eyes Watch Show, yeah. <laughs> like one of those kind of things going on. You don't know. All right, yeah, I might do that. Um, I would be like, uh, I'm, I'm assuming I'm talking to a conversation. Are you guys just seeing just like a monkey around here? They say monkey. They say I, I don't know, man. If you're looking like buy an animal, man, you should check out like the stable. They sell all kinds of animals there, man. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the stable. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, you have fun, man. Take it easy. You know, down with the human or down with kitsunes or whatever. Yeah. I'm kind of drunk. I don't know who I want to kill right now. <laughs> it's anybody. Just kill anybody. I'm gonna buy me a monkey too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of party. All right, so you head to the stable. All right, you head to the stable. They have lots of animals for sale, uh, a plethora. But you're looking for one in particular, so I won't even go through the list of what other animals they have. Uh, you will notice that you do find your ape, a Caesar, right? Yeah. Caesar yeah. is in a cage in the stable for sale. Aww. I want to talk to the man, but explain to him that someone stole my monkey. That's my monkey. He says, well, we bought it from the courthouse auction, man. He said, they said it was uh, abandoned by its owner. 
we we have all we've got all the papers right here. It says that we have all legal rights to this ape. It says you're more than welcome to buy it back from us if you abandon it. It's not our problem, sir. I'm, we have I'm, legal. We have all legal rights to this ape. How, how much? How much money are we talking about here, monkey man? Five hundred gold. <sighs> I was like, well, is there any? I could do probably not sexual. <laughs> that's kind of a weird question, man. I don't know. This is a, this is a place of business, and I accept gold. Maybe if you could, like, I don't know, what you offer me, like a favor or something. I don't know how that would work. You got like something to barter with? What are you trying to offer me, man? Uh, whatever's good for you. Maybe help. You need some, I can do some work around here. Pretty handy. He said, "What well, you like? You want to clean up like manure or something?" All right, well, if he says, I'll tell you what, you could do a month's worth of manure cleaning, and we'll consider that a payment for your rate. Oh, I like it, yeah. All right, so you stay for a month and spam time cleaning up manure? Yeah. All right, you spam time for a month coming in every day cleaning up manure. He's, after a month, he says, you've done real good work, son, and he uh, releases your ape to you. He's around town. I'll give you now that you've been out a month. I'll let uh, Kit do something and see if he runs back into you or, or what happens because he's also just been wandering around town with no uh, food, mom, no food, no gear. All of your other gear is still at holding in the courts, though. They didn't let, give you any of your gear back, so you've lost all your weapons and all your gear and stuff, unfortunately. But you have your ape. You have whatever you were wearing that's not gear. And Kit also has nothing, really, except what he was wearing. Mm -hmm. No, Kit went back to the... Didn't Kit go back to the village? No. Do you want him to? Um, you had him just wander around Arabane because you said it was two days away and you were afraid Alec would be killed by then. Hmm. Well, I guess in light of recent events... <laughs> she don't know what happened, but yeah. So you're going to go back to uh, Lancha du Renard to get some supplies. Yeah. All right, you go back to Entre du Renard. Your mother's happy to see you. Uh, she re-ups all your supplies. You have all the same stuff you started with, basically. Yeah. Everything you used to have, you pretty much have again, we'll say. Because your, your mom's really nice. Yeah, and she also gives you a sealed scroll case. And says, uh, this is something I, I, I made up um, that I drew up it's during my travels. She says, I want you to have it in case something happens to me. And he says, he says, gee, mama, nothing's ever going to happen to you. You're going to live forever. You're like super young. There's no way you're going to die before I see you again. No way, mama. That's impossible. And she says, oh, nothing's impossible, kid. She says, you be safe in your journeys. And says, maybe you'll find one of your uncles or aunt sometime. She says, keep an eye out for them and be safe oh, in the big city. coming back. So she told me to stay here because she said she's coming back. So I'm totally Oh, gonna... well, if I stay here in this forest, I'm going to burn alive. So that's probably not a good idea yeah, unless yeah, you no. want that to happen. Try and, try and stop it. Okay. You're well, talking this... about Arabane. Oh, Arabane. Yeah, he's going to stay in Arabane. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what she was expecting him to go back to Arabane and like look for her aunt and I'm uncle. I'm told. Okay. Uh, so, I'm, yeah. I'm so you, you get resupplied up after a couple of days. You spend some time with your mom. Um, yeah. Do you want to try and refine your owl in the big city, or do you want to try and get another animal since you're out here and just give up on that owl? Or I can't give up on my owl. Bro. All right, true druid, I like it. All right. Uh, so you get your supplies and you're determined to go back into town and find your owl and find a way to get reconnected with your friend and maybe find your aunt and uncle, etc. Yeah. Well, what, do you, what do you do? Where do you go? I know my friend's dead. He's or he already died, right? Who? Oh, that friend, yes, Todd. Todd is dead. You know he's dead. I was talking about the, uh, Alec, the guy that was Alec, in prison yeah. with you. So can I tell him I'm... Can I, like, I want to try to walk around the village a little bit and, like, double-check. Hey, everybody. Anybody want some adventure in the crazy racist town? We're going to go help this rock man, and he's going to protect us. And then... Jamal's like, going to come back. Rock man, you're crazy. You're just making stuff up. No, it's real. You my, mom, my mom said I should never leave the la the laundry yard because this is the safest place on earth, and here nothing bad will ever happen to me. <sighs> if I stay here, nothing bad can ever happen. I'm staying here because it's totally safe. Got it. Totally safe. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take my chances on some exciting. I'm gonna take my chances on some like exciting stuff that's there happening is. out in the world. <laughs> There's the voice. Perfect. My name's Kit. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like the kid talks at a higher register than Juwan. <laughs> All right. Uh, but at least I know it. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, you you finish getting all your crap and you head back to Arabane. Yep. All right, you make it back to Arabane with all your supplies, still looking all human. So how long does it take for um, Alex attempted execution? Uh, you here? He's supposed to be executed tonight. You can go to it. Yeah, can I go to it? You go to it. You see them try to hang Alec. Uh, you see the first he dangles there, and he's too heavy for the rope, and I so laugh. they have to re yeah. So first, then they try to readjust it, and then he hangs the higher the next time, except uh, it doesn't choke him because his neck's made of stone. It doesn't, it doesn't you know, uh, suffocate. So it doesn't work. Uh, the guards are furious. He's like flailing around and swinging at the guards, and the guards have a hard time because he's a big guy. So they have a hard time getting him off the rope. He he injures a couple of guards in the process. Uh, so it really frustrates the guards, and they postpone the execution until they can find a way to another way to kill him. Okay. Um, what about Jim and Jim? Do I see them anywhere? Do you know them? Um. Uh, no. Yeah, you never met them, so how would you know yeah, to look for them? Okay. Oh, yeah. You look like a human, so. I've never met you. Um, Kit is the most frustrating person. <laughs> I don't know what to do with him. Like, he's kind of useless by himself. Well, do you want to go look for your owl? Yeah, yeah, can I go around and, like, or whatever? Yeah, you can go around and hoo 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 hoo. I mean, I don't have to do that, though. I can just, like, look. Alright, let's, let's say you spend a, a couple days looking around, um, and finally, a couple days later, you get pointed in the direction of the stable. Alright. Let me go to the stable then. Alright, you go to the stable, look around. There's tons of animals there for sale. Oh, um, oh tons of animals, yeah. Cages and stuff. They're all caged. In like tiny cages. Um, a lot of them look pretty miserable. Uh, but you also what? see uh, your owl in a cage for sale ah. for 200 gold. Um, I have to get him on. Hang on. I have to see if he's got 200. He doesn't, though, right? Huh? I don't he know. Had, like, check your per. I uh, check his sheet. I don't know what he's got. I doubt it's two hundred gold, but you can roll a perception check while you're there too. It's perception fourteen plus nine, so twenty three for the perception check. All right, uh, you do see uh, a human, but he looks very familiar. You kind of recognize him. He's scooping up manure. So um, I only have fifty two gold, but I really, really, really want that owl. Okay. Um, I really, really, really want that owl. So, he says, well, that's real, I, that's real great, son, but it's, the sign says 200 gold. It's 200 I, gold. Can I, like, um, I'm, like, really good with animals and stuff, and I want to be a vet when I grow up. Can I, like, I don't know, work off the rest of the, the money? Perception check? Yeah. You see this fool trying to talk to this guy? Yeah. You can recognize, like, <laughs> you, you automatically like, recognize this voice no matter what you roll. <laughs> or, like, oh. or I don't know. I can be helpful. Oh, yeah, you, if nothing else, if nothing else, you recognize the voice. Well, I'll uh, help shovel some shit. You hear uh, the the human that you sort of recognized yell, "Do you want to help me shovel some shit?" I, I do. I do want to help you shovel shit if I get money so that I can get this here. The guy says, back. "Well, all right. Well, if you want to help the big guy shovel shit, I guess you guys can work together and tell you what." Can I have the owl? He says, "Well, if you you can work off your debt same time he works off his, and you can both get your anim these animals." Uh, at that period of time. How about that? Excellent. Yes, deal. All right, yeah. so you both scoop up shit, and then at the end of the period of time, you both get your animals back. Yay. And you're Can both I, free um, in the city of Arabane. What's that? Can I have conversations with the animals that are there? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Conversate. Them. Well, I want to ask them if they know where the, like, racist rallies and stuff are. Animals, yeah, like, the animals don't know where the racist rallies are in town. The ones in the cages have, have spent a lot of their time in cages, so they don't know. They don't yeah, get out so much. They didn't, like used to belong to anybody and get turned in here. Most of them are animals that were caught on hunts that are just being resold. They didn't get killed; yeah. just get caught and are being resold. Or animals that got confiscated from criminals, like the, your guys' <laughs> animals are imports. Some of them are imports from other places. That they just sell. Some of them they sell for hunting dragons and stuff like that. Like they have some hunting other animals to help with hunting. You know, it's animals that have been hunted. So, I want to find out 
find a way to try and free these animals. Um, Okay, so this is after you guys have worked there long enough to get your animals free. Do you want to continue volunteering to con keep scooping manure there on a voluntary basis until you come up with a plan to free them? Yeah, but uh, also I want to go in my off time after when I'm not scooping. Um, I'd like to go see if uh, gems are still hanging around town. The gems? Uh, you want to see if you can find them? Yeah, gem yeah, A, gem 1. Alright, so uh, after your execution they wouldn't have been hanging around the courthouse anymore. Uh, so what part of town are you looking for them in? So they're not in the main square, you said? Like where the... Yeah, they weren't where you had left them anymore. Like after your, you after the second execution of where they tried to execute and it didn't work, they would have moved on from that area. And not just like hung out there for days and days. They have to eat and sleep and have lives too. Yeah. So they would have went back probably to their headquarters and started doing other stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll probably go back to the v HQ. All right, do you take Kit with you? Yeah. I want to call. Okay, so you say, uh, follow, yeah. follow, me, follow me, kid. Uh, and the kid follows you to the outskirts of town, uh, where you guys reach the Velox Lair, uh, where you find the secret headquarters, and uh, you reach the Was front... like a secret secret? Yeah, you reach the front door of what you remember as the, as the Velox Lair, and it's locked. Uh-oh. What do we do? Uh, yeah, do the knock. The what? Is there a knock? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think kids have been there. I don't, I'm not part of this yet. I, I want to do it, but I'm not part of it yet. So. I will be, though, so they could, I mean, they could tell me, because I'm going to do it. Knock. I'm going to give it a, a solid. Hello? Hello? Someone says, uh, password. The well, password is password. <laughs> Incorrect. Oh, I tried. <laughs> um, can I knock again? Pop. I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna pop the cloak off and be like, "Yo, it's me, Alec Holland, from earlier. Yeah. Remember, I'm gonna try to bust all those guys out of jail." They say password. My uncle Jock. Password. My my uncle Jock, help! Can you, send, uh, can you send him out? We don't need to go in. Can I get a gem? Any gems? Pa pa password. Yeah. One, two, three, Incorrect. Kill the humans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Human, yeah. Humans must die. <laughs> Close. Close? Closest you've been. Death Kill the humans? humans? <laughs> Close to kid, but no. Humans. Uh, humans? Wait, humans. No. Wait, humans well. I want to eat humans' hearts. Look, I can tell you guys are on the right track. I really like you guys, and you got good energy, but it's not the right password. <laughs> I, I would like to... Tell you what, I'll send, I'll send someone out. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, so then, from atop a rooftop, someone jumps down beside you. Brian, what's um Scott's brother's name? Who Not you? Jock, it's... You can't ask me. You would, either you would know or you wouldn't. That's not Brian, something you can ask I me. Know. It's my uncle. Tell me How do you know? How did you do? Did you meet him? You met Jacques. Course, have you ever I... met Jean? How have you met Jean? Jean. Jean. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right anyway so yeah who jumps down off the roof <laughs> John, John. <laughs> yeah please <coughs> if you're there all right it looks like a human dre a human dressed in all black what's that natural 20 tell me everything <laughs> Alright, it looks like a human all dressed in black, but to you, kid, it looks like a kid you know from back home. In human form. Okay, can I look around? Is anybody, like, I mean, are we in, like, a secret hidden place? So if I turn into a kid soon... Well, you're in the outskirts of town. I mean, he's in human form, so you would assume it's probably not safe. If he's in human form, and you recognize him as someone from back home, and he's not in kitsune form, it's probably not safe. Well, in that case, I'm just going to be like, I'm Kit, Kit, Kit Aubrey, I'm... I know you, I know you. Hey. Yeah, okay. And he's like, oh, kid, I recognize you too. Oh, my God, okay, what are you oh, doing here? He's like, like, he knocks back on the door and says, live to kill, die. Live to kill, die? Yeah. I think we like, kill all humans is better. <laughs> they say, but, but a little too obvious. <laughs> well, it's more direct message, you know? Good well, look, if you want to work on our branding team, you can talk to Jean about it. Cool, yeah, yeah, Uncle Jean. I remember all right, they take, he takes you to Uncle Jean. Oh, Uncle Jean. Uh, 
They call him Big Jean. Big Jean Aubre. Big Jean. And so you guys are uh, back to, to Big Jean Aubre. And Jean says, Hey, the Aurias, you made it out of the prison. How did you do it? He says, I'm a monkey, though. He says, ah, it's so good to see you and your monkey. And then he says, he snaps his fingers, and then four kitsune jump out and have knives held to you. And he says, he says, get back, little one. He says, this one, he went to the racist meeting. And they all, they all have knives held on you now. He says, we think he is a, uh, what you call a backstabber. <laughs> I was like, I've, I've gotten so many of you guys out of prison. Uh, no. I just had to say what I had to say to get out of jail. Right, roll me diplomacy. No, no way. He's not a backstabber. No. You can roll I'm, diplomacy. I'm, you can roll diplomacy with him to help, kid. Okay, yeah. No, he's awesome. Um, kicks. Diplomacy. Who doesn't have it? It's a charisma modifier. Um. So if it's a ten, and then it's plus zero. Yep. Twelve. All right, so neither one of you did great, but because you're both working together, and because uh, in here, in here, if you can transform back into Kitsune, if you want to do that, okay, that helps. Uh, he sees you're a Kitsune. You look sort of familiar with those two roles helping each other. John? I will allow it that yeah, he'll say, oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll hear him out. What he say? He say he had to trick them. I get that. He said we we know how that is. We have we have some guys on the inside. You know what I mean? A wink, yeah. wink. Want to help, Uncle? He says, "Okay, oh, okay, okay." He says, "You can help." He says, uh, "You look uh, like f familiar. Who are you?" Who are you talking to? You, you little one. I'm Kit, Uncle Jean. Uncle Jean, <gasps> Kit Abre, you are Roger's <laughs> little one. I have not seen you since you was knee high to a grasshopper. I, I know, I'm, I'm bigger than all. The you time. are way bigger than a grasshopper's knee now. Yeah. A lot taller. A head, a head taller than a horse grasshopper knee now. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so, like, I left. I left with, uh, with Juan, and then she, she went to go help her friends, and she told me to stay here. Our plan is that we want to kill, kill all the humans. Oh, Juan, we have not seen her. Is she with you? No, she, she's coming back, though, so. Oh, well, we would love to see her. He says, Jacques is here. He is in the other room. He is sleeping like a little baby. He got a little, a little shotgun wound. He's crying about it and sleeping all day. Can I go draw a penis on his face? <laughs> oh, please do. Would you do that for me? I would love that. That would be hilarious. I'm going to draw a fox penis on Oh, that's so good. He would love that. You go Here, you can borrow my permanent marker, which I seem to have, because we do graffitis here. And you can, here, like now you can add this marker to your inventory. <laughs> you can keep it, put it in your bag. You get a permanent marker. You can you write graffiti. Is a permanent magic marker? Yes, it's made of magic <laughs> marker. So it's like, does that have like an actual permanent spell? Yes, it cannot be washed away by anything. <laughs> Once you draw it on there, it can never come off. Without the magic of remove curse. I'm going to do it so that it's, like, facing into his mouth. Oh, he will think that is so funny. You should definitely do that. All right, so he gives you a permanent magic marker, and you go draw a penis on your sleeping uncle's face. All right, so you draw a fox dick next to going into Jacques' mouth and permanent marker, which can I'm only be... Little, I'm going to do a little one that goes, like, here. Okay. So it's, like, on his face all the time. All right, which can only be removed by a remove curse spell. So now Jacques has a permanent... Penis drawn on his face. Thanks to Kid Arbre. I'm so funny. You are your <laughs> nephews, you know? They are so mischievous. All right. I'm sure he'll get me back, though. It's but you fine. do see he's all bandaged up and bleeding and wounded. Uh, from a sh look like a big, pretty bad shotgun wound. Whenever he was trying to, to free some Kitsune from jail. Jay, yeah, you guys are in the Velox now. You guys want to spam time here until the others arrive? Or do you guys want to do stuff until they arrive? That's your call. All right, what would you like to do with your monkey until then? I guess I probably want to train him uh, to listen to me when I tell him to attack. So just the attack one? There's actually uh, the, there's the attack uh, skill or f trick, but yeah. there's also a, a combined trick called combat tricks, which combines like attack, defend. Uh, there's a couple different ones. You want to look oh, that I up? Like that. 
All right, because you guys have time. Cause you, you have like a month or two to spam, and that takes three weeks, and I'll even let you take a 20 because you guys are doing nothing. So I'll say you are able to do it perfectly. <laughs> the ape is also now really good at shoveling shit because Flash is master. Yeah. Months. It's like, you, you know how to do that. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> we'll say you spent six to eight weeks doing that. Uh, Kit, what have you done during these six to eight weeks? Um, I actually want, um, I want to get, like, battle trained or whatever, like, fight shit, because I want to, like, I want to help in the rebellion. I want to, like, kill people and stuff. Okay, so, so what would you, you like to get out of that? What? What would you like, what are you trying to get out of it? Um, I want to be part of the Belloc, so. Okay, so you want him to join, the, go through the whole initiation process. Mm-hmm. All right, let me look and see what that's going to entail for you real quick. All right, um, so uh, you're going to get a gauntlet of skilled maneuver and a black outfit. Uh, the, the skill, it's gauntlet of skilled maneuver steel. S-T-E-A-L. Hang on, Kit gets yep. gauntlet. Skilled maneuver steel. S-T-E-A-L steel? Yep, steel, like stealing. Like yes. Okay. And what that does is it gives you a plus two on uh, combat maneuver checks whenever you're trying to steal on, on a CMB. On a CMB to steal, you get a plus two while you're while you're wearing this gauntlet. And you have a black Velox outfit, which is like just a little black ninja outfit. It gives you a plus two to stealth. And you get a plus two to sleight of hand from your training with him. And you also get a uh, you also get a Velox tattoo. Oh, what's that look like? It's a V. Like a like Yeah, but it kind of lo also looks like a uh, fox head. It's like a V with eyes and like a nose. Cute, really cute. I like it. Okay, um, so where does it's it? It's very go? tiny. You can get it wherever you want. They prefer. They say it's probably smart to hide it so humans can't find it. So you can get it wherever you want. It's usually very tiny. Um, where, where does, um, I want to do it wherever Jean has his. It's on his testicles. Uh, Alright then, I guess Kit's going to get it on Alright, Kit gets a tat tattoo on his testicles. Done. I'm, I'm trying to be a badass here. Yeah, it's working, you're, you're becoming a man. Maybe your voice drops an octave. Yeah, now you can talk deeper if you want. My name's Kit Arbray, <laughs> and now I'm a member of the Bell I don't want to have to do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's exhausting. Alright. Um, so now about this period of time, the rest of the group will be arriving in Arabane. You guys have spent about enough time that they would have time to come back. Leave and come back. Because Joanne pretty much spent only a day or two gone before she decided that she should bring the rest of the group here. Yeah. So yeah, so it's been several months for you guys, um, since you've seen each other. But I can just, uh, have you guys roll perception checks separately, or while you guys are out? <laughs> Out and about in the city and see see who sees who. Okay. We can do uh, Kit and Alec first. No, Kit got eleven. Yeah, okay, Kit doesn't see anybody. He knows what you got, Alec. You don't know anybody, so it doesn't really matter so much. But I just got a twenty natural eighteen plus two. All right. What you got, Alec? Seven. Seven. Yeah, you don't know anybody. You didn't know these people, so it'd be hard for you to recognize any of them. Juan got sixteen. Okay. Uh, we'll say Juan uh, thinks she saw someone that looked like Kit darting off down an alley. I think I, I, she says, I think I saw my nephew running off that way down the alley when you guys come in through the outskirts of town. You guys have now arrived in uh, Arabane. You're all wearing your disguises and such. Oscar's passed out. I don't know what you guys do with him, dragging him, or what, what's happening with that. But uh, well, the last place we were, we were signing up for the uh, the dragon quest. That's right. You guys have uh, it went to a, a dragon excursion place. So you guys are actually in the middle of town. So you saw uh, uh, what you thought looks like Kit dart off down the street in the middle of town, and uh, you guys are across the street at a, uh, a dragon excursions place, signing up for an adventure. Yeah. Um. All right. And now Oscar all of a sudden. 
you know, it gets a little too bright outside, and he's like, I, I better go take a nap. I, I can't. I can't uh, yeah, yeah. Well, he probably just passes out. He probably wouldn't say anything about it because he just can't help it. So he probably just zonked out on the ground outside of this place. That's not Because the sun came up. You guys came in in the middle of the night, but then uh, the sun rose, and he forgot to cast his yeah, darkness spell, the, apparently. Uh, the dragon people, where we can get, like, a cheap hotel for our friend. Uh, yeah, they say there's a hotel here in town. If you want to go to the inn there, that's fine. I'll pay to put him up. In a room. All right, so ten gold a night. Okay. So ten gold a night, while uh, for how many many nights you guys leave Oscar there? So let's calculate that per days of adventuring well, today. Yeah. Well, so far it's been zero days. Well, one, pay for one right now up front, and then if we you spend more yeah. time than a day, then just keep adding ten to it. Okay. Every time well, a day I can passes. Pay for one, so I'll just. Yeah. After that, and if not, he'll just be in trouble when he wakes up and owes them money. So. He's got money, hopefully. Yeah, he's got plenty from what I understand, so I'm sure, he's, just, I'm sure if you pay for the first night, he can get the rest. Yeah, I just don't want anybody to bother him, though. All right, like, so you pay for one stuff. night in his room. I mean, yeah. they might bang on the door if he doesn't come out of the first night. Not disturbed, so I'll yeah. keep as well, so we have a place to leave our stuff if we need to leave anything All right, behind. so you lock him in his hotel room and take the key. <coughs> There's only one key? What kind of hotel is this? I mean, like six key cards made? This is, yeah, it's like it's an old school hotel. It's like a key. They assume whoever's in the room will just t- take the key with them. So, I guess let's lock him in the room. All right, you lock Oscar in his hotel room, oh, and you, you re- like a do not disturb. Thing. You, you want to leave him a note in there or something? You can leave him a note in his room. That's smart. Let's do that. All right, you leave him a note in the room on the a hotel stationery with their inkwell and feather pins that are by the bed. Ooh, they also have. The they also have a uh, small uh, holy tracks in the in the bedside manner for red dragon. What the hell's that? They, I mean, it's just a red dragon. It's painful about how awesome oh, the red dragon is. Tracked. Yeah, tracked. Tracks. Yeah, tracked. it's, it's like a little picture book, a little comic book that says the red dragon's awesome, and know, if you find him, you get a wish. I know. I'm... Okay. Propaganda. Propaganda. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess let's leave him a note. Saying. Passed out. We shoved you in this room. We'll be back in here. Our little angel. Shut up. No, we don't have the marker. We're going to have to lock you in here. And we can put the key underneath the door. And so he'll have it in here to be locked in. You can do that. The, cor- right. the key will fit under the door if you want to slide under the door. Can he unlock it from the inside without the key? Not without the key, no. So let's leave right. the key. Yeah, we'll just get the we'll, Never mind, we'll leave the key. Part. So you just slide the key into the door once you leave? Yeah. Um, Still leave a note saying, we left you here, come find us whenever. Yeah. Yeah, I guess try to, try try to, to find us. Find if we leave town, we'll come back and get you. Yeah, if we leave town, we're going to be either looking for yeah. a dragon or uh, back at yeah. the... Say that you're going to come back. Leave the note, we'll say that you're going to at least come back by the inn before, before you leave town. So. Yeah. yeah. Stay here. here <laughs> Basically, happens. stay here if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, or come back here if you leave. So if he leaves, he'll know to come back here to wait for you guys. All right. All right, so what do you do? Cool. Um, all right, so we need to get a little info about this dragon uh, quest. All right, so you guys have, uh, did you sign up for an adventure? Uh, I believe so. I think we were about to, and that's where you kind of cut it. All right, so uh, you guys you know, you had to probably had to drop Oscar off at the hotel, then to go back across the street to this place. You can bring this passed out guy in with you. So, how many people are in your party? Four of us. No, three of us at the moment. Okay, so there Four are three of you. Us. Yep. It could be more if we go find Kit and Jock. Well, that's all fun. We're we're trying to find Kit, but this is our cover, so we need to. Mm-hmm. Said, so, well, for the three of you, he said, well, three. That's real dangerous. He said, afraid for three. Awesome. For three of you, I'm going to charge a thousand a head, just for security and uh, insurance reasons. We don't need security. So you say that, but you ain't never gone up against a dragon before. You need an experienced hunter with you. We're experienced. He says, well, what are you doing here? This uh, <laughs> tourist excursion's out. You just, if you're so experienced, go find a dragon on your own then. Because it's fun. We don't know anything about this island. He says, well, what, you just want me to sell you a map, or what are you asking for? Uh, I'm going to... Roll diplomacy for a uh, information on uh, perhaps a map and a uh, seasoned guy. Where to find those things? I got a twenty-six. All right, he says uh, he can sell you a, a map of the mountains for a hundred gold. 
Um, he says, as far as season's guide, he says you should just ask around in the tavern. There's some really good hunters in town. Maybe one of them would give up some of their free time to help you go hunt a dragon. All right. Well, then uh, I'll take. I'll go ahead and uh, purchase that map from you. All right. All right. Well, we got us a map. So let's. Uh, we're we're gonna hold off on signing up. We're gonna try to gather more people for us to yeah. maybe drop with get a group. It does rate, get though. cheaper with a group rate, and you know if you guys are. He says if you guys are seasoned tra- or trappers or hunters, you don't need a guide. He says you know it might help to you know have more people with you just for safety. But you got you know if you have the map. Dragon hunts just walking around the mountains waiting for something to come out, babe. A lot of us just waiting, you know? All right. A lot of just sitting out there just waiting for something to come. Oh All right. It's anticipation. Well, cool. Okay. I guess we'll hang out in town for a few days and see if we can rustle up some more volunteers for this here hunt. Start walking, checking taverns, doing perception checks inside, outside, looking for people who look like they, uh, want right. to go Juwan, Juwan did see someone that looked like your nephew dart off, if you want to follow yeah, the direction that he darted off in. Yeah. Let's casually, but not, you know... Do you, uh, Juwan, want to roll a survival check to track uh, where you saw this someone that looked like your nephew run down this alleyway? He was dressed all in black, and it was, it was hard to tell. It didn't look like him normally. Plus your survival. Twelve? Well, it's not great, but you, you can see that someone did come through this alley. Yeah, but it seems, it seems to lead out of the center of town. They seem to be darting away from the center of town. I mean, that makes sense. And you see, uh... You do see something scrawled in the wall nearby. Ooh, what's it say? It's a V that looks kind of like a fox. Go home. Yeah, it's a V that looks kind of like a fox. Okay. Huh, that looks sort of like a tattoo that Jacques has. On his testicles. <laughs> you guys have a really close relationship. Jacques has it on his testicles? I don't know where Jacques has it, but I'm just kidding because that's where everyone else has gotten it so far. <laughs> I've never talked with Jacques about where he got his Velox tattoo at. I'm just assuming yeah, it's he, testicles. I bet it's visible on him. He loves this. He's very proud of... It's like right in the middle of his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't matter because he's invisible all the time. <laughs> yeah, part of the secret organization. <laughs> and this is their logo. And this is my <laughs> member card. And this is where they're located. Okay. All right, well, go on. Um, I'm gonna, I guess in that case, I'm going to recognize it as a tattoo that Shock has. And because I'm a friggin' genius, I can put two and two together. Make seven and be like, hey, that's the Velox thing. We're on the right path, I guess, so we know to look out for more of those, maybe? Is it like really tiny on the side of the wall or something? That's about the size of, of uh, you know, your two fingers. It's about this big. A couple inches. Two, three inches tall. So I'm not going to like point at it and be like, guys. This thing is a cool thing. I'm gonna like elbow Cersei and be like, "Eh, that that's a uh, that's it. That's a symbol of the the people that we're looking for." Can I do a knowledge history check on that symbol. See if maybe I've seen it in my past lives or uh, yeah, sure. See if it comes up. All right. We need to keep our eyes out for more of those. That's a twenty. Uh, in one of your past lives, you were a noble in this city. Uh, when the Velox first started up, you were an elderly noble. Um, you're dead now. Yeah, you're dead. Well, of course, that's how she was reborn under the body. I know, it's a joke. Uh, but yeah, and you remember that the, the Velox uh, were just troublemakers. All right, I'm in trouble. And seeing that sign was a sign that you were like leaving the good part of town and in, in, entering <laughs> the bad part of town, basically. All right, well, let's uh, let's keep our wits and coin purses about us, people, and uh, keep rolling. Narrow down the search because this seems like, you know, we're looking for a kid who we know is mischievous. Correct? You've been telling us all about him throughout the, the ride here and everything about how he's and all the trouble, trouble he's all caused you. The big city by himself. So, uh, but I believe that if Kit, would, well, can I do a perception check for Kit to see if he no like realizes that someone's followed him or whatever? Yeah, you can make Kit roll a perception check. <laughs> I need to make a sheet for him. Yeah. Or keep it handy on your phone. Oh, 24. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Kit realized right away that someone was following him. There's a large, there's like a large group of people, which I guess only three. There are three people coming down an alleyway after him. Um, oh, one of them? Yeah. 
uh, seem somewhat familiar. Can so let's say he uh, darted up to a rooftop nearby to watch and see what happens. Not somewhat familiar. Very familiar. He knows me. All right, he recognizes you, but he's on the rooftop nearby. and doesn't know the people you're with, and so he's afraid to say anything. But he is nearby, and he does see you. Let's do some perception checks, see if we can see this guy. Okay. It's got to be around here somewhere. I'm looking around. Okay. Natural one. Your eyeball falls out. No, you don't see anything. Um, well, should we look for some more of these uh, B symbols that were on your brother's uh, genitalia? Wait, Morgan is with us, right? Yeah, I'm here. Morgan, do a perception check. What are you doing? Uh, who are we looking for? Let's go. Uh, Morgan, perception check. Yeah, Morgan's looking for Yeah, leave it to the elf. Elf perception. Yeah, right away. She says, up there on the roof. And points, Ed points at someone in black clothing hiding up on a rooftop. Is there someone up there? No, well, he's like you can only see the you can only see the black. You can't see any of his face. It's hidden behind the, the face wrap and all the stuff he's wearing. Let's walk in that direction then. I mean, all right, yeah, we'll head over towards there. He sees you guys coming, and uh, he he darts off further. Um, you see him stop with his permanent marker, and he draws another V on the wall and turns a corner. All right. We see that? Yep. Uh, obviously, we're going to follow that trail, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on board. All right. You follow him. He keeps doing this uh, over and over again several times. You guys reach the outskirts of the town, um, and then you think you lose sight of him, and then all of a sudden he peers from behind you. And he walks up and says, You on! And then I go, Kit! Yeah. And then... We're going to hug and stuff, and I'm going to be like, oh my god, you're wearing all black. You did so good without me. And he's going to be like, ha ha, yeah, I'm like really awesome, and so yeah. I'm a ninja now. So, um, this is how you get into our thing, and, and Uncle Jean is here, but um, Jacques got shot, and so he's asleep, and I put a penis on his face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get all caught up, and he can, take, he can take you into the Velox lair if you like. Yep. This is, uh, this is Cersei, Morgan. Also, badass adventurers. Um, you're going to learn a lot of stuff from everyone all the time, I guess, now, since you're a Velox. So I'm very proud of you. Let's go inside and any, the rest any, of the news, any news for your nephew or anything? Yeah, you don't want to... Not in the street now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So you go inside the Velox lair, which is, like I said, a rundown uh, building on the outskirts of town. All right. Let's go. Uh... Rolls perception checks. I want to see what the place this, this place looks like. At twelve, uh, nineteen. It's not much to look at. It's a pretty run down, like I said, place. But there are, you notice, as soon as you guys came inside, most of uh, everyone inside is is Kitsune, um, not disguised as human, as human, just flat out Kitsune, Kitsune, just wandering around. Um, they seem to be taking care of each other. Uh, they're uh, Kitsune of all ages, young and old. Alec is there, Kid is there. Alec is inside the Velox. They're keeping him in hiding because in human form he's too recognizable and in rock form he's too recognizable. But do we know Alec? No. You do. Kit does. She does. But, like, we don't. No, but Kit can introduce you to his friend Alec, who he, you know... Kit and him are very close. They shoveled shit together for several months. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Kate could be like, this is my buddy, Alec. He we, he helped me whenever you left, Aunt Juan. Whenever I was in trouble, I was in jail. He helped me escape and kept me safe. Thank you so much, Alec. I, you're a good person for helping out this small child. Yeah. And um, we, I'd like to repay you somehow. Don't don't know how you... Uh, your reward of some sort. I was thinking about talking to my lawyers, the gems, my fake lawyers, about getting... See if I can go back to the police station and pick up my belongings. Did you have anything really that? It, by the way, my name's Cersei. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 This is Cersei, my monkey. Caesar, monkey. Yeah. Uh, this is Winston, my uh, Sturge. It's, it's my familiar. Uh, he's He has eight legs and four wings, and he looks kind of like a mix between a spider and a mosquito. Yeah. He's a Sturge. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm going to be like, oh, so you want to get 
getting your stuff back, did you really have anything that was that valuable and worth it to get back? I need, I just need armor for me and my monkey. Uh, you have my monkey Caesar. armor. Yeah. Well, Ju- Juwan said she owes you one. What if she, like, repurchased that stuff for you? That was me, Juwan. Uh, Can we go ahead? Let's go hit the uh, auction. You said there was an auction earlier. Is there, like, a police auction? That's yeah, like auction. They, that's how they got the, the yeah, monkey, right? there's a police auction. You want to go to the auction and try and buy your stuff back at auction? All right, yeah. so you guys go to the police auction. Um, and well, I, would, I want to look at other stuff besides just his stuff, too. Okay, I would say it would be unwise to take him. Yeah. Uh, that'd probably be it. But. So we'll get details of what he wants back. I need to tell Kit what happened. Okay, so uh, while you guys are discussing going to this auction, uh, Juwan Kit takes Kit to the room. side. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what I do. Okay. Uh-huh. I'll take Kit with me into the room that... Um, Jacques is like passed out in because you know, even though people are in coma, sometimes they can still hear you or whatever. So I'm gonna um, be like, Kit, I've got possibly the worst news imaginable. Um, on our way back here, we went by um, Lantra, and I mean, there's not an easy way to say this. So uh, your your mom was killed <coughs> by the racist humans. They essentially tried to burn Lantra to the ground and kill everyone that was there. Um, I gave her a good burial and a flower pot thought like came up in her place. Um, I do think that before we get too far away, adventure landing, that you should go back, you know. Yeah, he definitely to wants to go back and visit her grave and, and the city. He even yeah. seems somewhat determined uh, to maybe even move back there and rebuild Lantra. Yeah, so right now, so I mean, I'm just going to like fill him in on like, you know, we've got the yeah. whatever. He says, he says uh, he'll need to make a decision whether he wants to stay on adventuring with you or move back to Lantra and try and rebuild. Yeah. So he's torn up inside. He does reveal to you, uh, he takes out of his pocket a sealed scroll case that his mother gave him, and he says, well, maybe this is now a good time to open this. What is it? It's a sealed scroll case. Okay. He doesn't know yet. He's going to open it. He opens it, and it reveals a map. Okay. It's a map that your sister made. Uh, you unroll the map. It is a map labeled Hero's Tomb. So it's a map that your sister made whenever she was stuck on Hero's Tomb all that time when she went searching for you. Uh, she made a map of the of the island that no one's no one goes to. This is the only known map of Hero's Tomb. You've never seen one in any shop. It's not available anywhere else. So yeah, you got that. So that means we need to go there, right? That's gonna be fun. The place must be really dangerous, though, isn't it? It's called Hero's Tomb. <laughs> all right. Touche. <laughs> so yeah, okay. but he's got a decision to make basically, and then you, you guys have this map now. You have access to it. He shared it with you. So uh, we do still want to continue our plan of uh, basically wiping out all the racist humans. Um, I understand that you can be like very vengeful and incredibly angry in, in your heart. Hearing some hate around up in here. Not a not a good place to be in life, though. So I don't want you to uh, participate in this murderous rebellion against the racist humans. If you think that it's going to turn you to some kind of dark side of Kit. Um, so maybe you need to go have some Gozra time. Thank you for the gift of your mother. And... Um, <coughs> Are you sending Kit back to launch or do Renard right now? No. We're in the outskirts of town. Right? I mean, you guys, yeah, but it's still like a city here. It's not very nature's buildings and stuff. <laughs> you would have to leave the city to find any nature, any kind of gozer type area. Oh. I mean, there's some small groves inside of town, but for him, it would be probably more comfortable to go to the forest where he grew up. Well, he's an animal, right? Can he not just like. Have a private moment with his owl. I mean, he can, yeah. He does. He has a private moment with his owl. 
All right, you guys want to go to this auction now? Yeah, and we're looking for other stuff besides just organs. All right, so you guys go to this auction. All right, first alphabet of quarter staff. Uh, starts off at one gold. Do you guys bid one gold? One gold. All right, let's see if anyone outbids you. Uh, no one else bids. Yay! All right, so that's minus one gold. I'll bid it. All right, longbow. Longbow is 25 golds to start. Do you guys bid? Bid. No one else bids. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy that. Alright, they have a uh, leather armor. Two large leather armors. They're going to sell them together. Starting bid is 20 gold. Bid. Yeah, 20 gold. Bid. No one else bids. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah. 20 or 40? 20, 20 for both. Yeah, it was a, a combo package. Okay. They both smell like apes, they said, so you don't have to wash them. You lost all that stuff, but that stuff's up for auction too. <laughs> uh, ten gold is the starting bid. Ten. This time someone bids seventeen. Uh, Eighteen. Someone bids twenty. Twenty-five. Uh, that's too rich for their blood. Right, you get okay. it for twenty-five. You get your kit back. I got that. That's Are you out of this? Yeah. All right, you yeah, want to see what else they have? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. All right, first item up for bid is a pistol. Barely used. Barely used? Yep. This Starting is bid is 1,000 gold. Ah, oh, we're good. Ooh, I kind of want that. But can it, no one else can use a gun if you're not a gunslinger, though, right? Yeah. Correct. No. For you, right. it would be treated like a magical weapon that you wouldn't know how to use. No, can do a perception or a praise check. I've got to use magic device. Yeah, but it's not necessarily. I mean, you still wouldn't know how to use it. It doesn't work. It's, it's not, not a magic device. Anyway. All right. <laughs> it's not technically magic. I'll spell crap the shit out of you. That. You will, but you won't understand it still. But that's not how it works. Can I, uh, can I do a quick appraise check? First? You'd be able to fire it once if it's loaded, but after that, you wouldn't know what to do with it next. Yeah, you know that that's actually probably a good deal on this pistol if you get in in it for that low. All right, let's see if anybody outbids you. You actually get it. It's a pistol. Early pistol. Um, and now up, up next, up next, they have bullets to go with said pistol. There's a hundred of them for for a hundred gold is the starting bid. All right, see anyone bids over that. Someone says 101. I say 115. All right, 120. You got it. Score. Nice. All right. Up next is a box of caltrops. Uh, uh, opening bid is like opening this. bid is two gold. I'll take them. All right. Do you have to have the scout? No, uh, no one else. No one else uh, bids. You get a box of caltrops. Which, uh, which fills one five foot square. Anybody use them, or do you need to have like? Anyone can use them. She can just dump them out of the box. Cool. <laughs> uh, up next on the on the on the bidding block is a fifty foot length of chain um, for sixty gold is the opening bid. Can I spell craft it and see if there's anything special about the chain? You can. You never know. Twenty eight. No, nah, it's just a chain. That's a damn chain. All right. I assume it's fucking heavy as shit. I mean, it's, you know, 50 chain. foot of chain. Yeah. All right, up next on the on the block is a, a very fancy bottle of a restorative ointment. Opening bid is 6,000. Nope. Any takers? Fast hope. All right. One here. There One. is a portable altar up next for 250. 
Can I do knowledge religion on the type of altar? Or if it's just like a altar in general, don't have knowledge religion? Uh, you can tell right now there's no markings on it. It appears to be an all-purpose altar, suitable for any religious practice. I don't need an altar. Travel size, you said? Yep, travel size, portable altar, folds up. I just like to do my... Know, sacrifices. Yeah, uh, never heard of a portable altar. If you want to sacrifice stuff on the altar, you've got one with you. The opening bit on that's I, I the opening like bit it. on that's two hundred. Yeah, I don't want to lug it around, but, but, but it would give me a bonus to my religion checks. I know why. Would hurt. Uh, up next is a uh, cachet of board games. There are ten board games. So the opening bit is ten gold. Uh, this could be a good way for us to get into some gambling and, you know, and stuff like that, challenge people to a game of Snickerbocker at the local tavern or something like that. Just become your old noble gambling demon. Yeah, I like, I, I don't mind gambling. I don't know if that's really Cersei's kind of thing, though. She's more like the okay. prostitution. Morgan's down for some gambling. You want the board game? Uh, I, I mean, know, are, are they special at all? Monopoly, They're just board games of some sort, um, you know, not magical or anything like that. Just board games, fun to play, good to, to consume time. You can gamble with them, uh, you know, form of entertainment. Brooke was the only person that gambling. Uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll pass. All right, they have a crate of fox pelts. Mm. Opening oh. bid is six gold. Gross. Who would want fox that? pelts? Huh? Yeah, a whole crate. Um, about, about 100 fox pelts for only 6 gold. At least fox, they're at least fox-like. Alright, well, I... Hmm. Gross. Can I, get a, can I get a fur coat? Can I get someone to make a fur coat out of that for me? If you could find someone that is capable fur of doing coat. that. You find a clothier or something? Yeah, a tailor? I can make jewelry, but I'm not going to be able to do anything with fox fur. You might be able to find a, someone that could. No, that's just going to end up pissing off. That I hang out with, probably. Probably. Especially yeah. since it's probably not actually fox. There's murder. Probably since it's definitely not fox fur. Yeah. To well, be honest. It's worth where the medic is, actually. What's enough? that? Is there enough there for me to animate the, the dead? Probably. Do you want yeah. to, like, have an army of, like, you know, risen fox furs that have started attacking the audience here? Like, fox. Fox. Yeah, uh, no. Um, I don't think I, I want to purchase a bunch of skin. All right. Uh, up next, they have uh, 20 pounds of coffee beans for 20 gold. Ooh. Coffee is not a bad thing in the morning. Alec over here looks like he enjoys a strong, a strong brew. Alec put a little Irish coffee. <laughs> nah, pass up. No takers? Uh, they are <laughs> selling... <laughs> Someone has a, a, a large chunk of uh, one pound of platinum, uh, which is uh, starts at starting bid was 1,200 gold. Platinum's worth a lot, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty cheap, then. Can you make jewelry? I can make jewelry. Praise it, it's, it's both platinum. Platinum. How, how much? You said platinum. 1,600? Uh, 1,200. 1,200. I don't know if I really want that, but... If all else fills out like needed. He's a rock fighter. <laughs> now pass on platinum. Alright, um, and last up is a magnifying glass that's going for 200. Can I spell craft it? Yep. What it is? Uh, 28. Appears to be a magnifying glass. Man. Boring human shit. Sorry guys, these are humans. They don't have a lot of magic shit. Um, I'll take the uh, the magnifying glass. It might be helpful just for me to be able to read stuff. Um, and no, no one outbids you either, so 200 gold is all it is. 200, huh? Yep. I don't want it. Well, there's only one of them, and Cersei already bought it, so uh, can't have it. That was a pain. That's your chance. You can borrow it. Too late. You yes, just ask. Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll, 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 we'll take care of it. It's going to be good. All right, you guys have gone to a uh, an auction at the courthouse now, and uh, you hear there's an execution. After the auction, oh. if you guys want to stick around. Um, yeah, I'm down to see some death. It might be a good way to find out what these um, racist humans look like when they're not covered up in their uniforms and stuff. Well, there's a pretty big crowd. It's all kinds of people, men, women, children, of all ages. 
All of them cheering. Goes on the, uh, the chopping block. Can we do a perception check? Yep. Yeah, no, it's going to be five. Uh, 29. 29. It's a kitsune. It's a kitsune. Oh my god, I have to save them. No one that you know, but yeah. This looks like someone that's being accused of being a member of a secret organization, and it's been uh, putting graffiti Vs all over town. Oh, no. Um, it's not Kit. It's not Kit, but it's someone, some other Kit about his age. It could be Kit. It could be, but it's not. Someone about his age. Could be his old buddy that he met outside the front door. Are they like, I'm assuming that's like an ass oh, yeah. people here. Yeah, there's a very large crowd. Over 100 people here. Some of them throwing stuff at the Kitsune. A lot of them shouting racial slurs. Even the little children. You know, some of them, some people shouting things that aren't necessarily slurs, but things calling them calling a criminal or nothing nice is being said. No one's like, that guy's a nice guy. Or anything like that. There's no one here on his side, for sure. Well, I have a bunch of sneezing powder. Can I, like... But you used it all. No, I didn't. I used one of my two pounds. Oh, you saved a pound. I thought you only had a pound. I remember her her saying she only wanted to use half of it, I think, for the the distractions. No. So you want to to do it again? I mean, kind of, yeah. So you guys are at the back of this crowd? You just want to blow it into the crowd? No, that's silly. Of course I don't want to do that. What do you want to do? (laughs) Um, I guess I get closer. I'd like to really gust of wind it to the people that are doing the executing. Okay. The guys up on stage wearing hoods? Yeah. I guess so. Okay. So, uh, first thing you roll a strength check to get closer to the stage. To push yeah, past I'm going to hang out towards the back. Yeah. <laughs> gust of wind, I don't have to. Or you're just going to gust of wind it all the way up there, is what you're saying. You're going to control the gust of wind, and from the back, blow the sneezing powder to the stage. Yeah? Okay. I'll allow that. Yeah. So you uh, blow this sneezing powder to the stage. Um, Roll me a percentage chance to see if their hoods blow off. Gust of wind is pretty strong stuff there. I know, just roll me a percentage chance, please. I'm doing it. Thank you. (laughs) Um... 94. So yes, their hoods blow off, and they start <laughs> sneezing. Uh, have any of you guys had encounters with the captain of the guard here? No. All right, well, that's or can who we is. roll a perception check to see who's underneath the hoods? Just to know what they look like. Yeah, you can roll to see what he looks like, that's for sure. Yeah. Roll me a perception check, and I'll tell you what he looks like. God damn, I don't know shit. 16? All right, Morgan, <laughs> fucking elf. <laughs> uh... You see a guy with a really large forehead and really big ears, really uh, terse lips, and like dead eyes stare. His hair is like really slick and combed back. Uh, yeah, he's got really strong features. Kind of looks like The Undertaker from wrestling fame. Oh, nice. Good looker. Yeah. <laughs> Real big forehead. Uh, but yeah. All right, what now? Tell me. They sneeze. Huh. They sneeze. That yeah, they're sneezing. You blew sneezing powder at them. Their heads blow off. What else do you want me to make happen with that? Their heads, ex- their heads explode. <laughs> 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 their heads don't explode, though. That didn't happen. That's not canon. They just sneezed. Oh, man. These adventures make my head want to explode. That's a pretty good gust of wind spell, though. All those racist sneezing and stuff. Well, join us next time for more fun gags on Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater.